Peter, we're in here inside a countervailing theory. Can you describe how you compose ceremonies within as a, in complement to, to the installation? The way I came to compose ceremonies within was, was about creating an installation that was interactive, that would bring you into a new world, because the idea was that this space was just perfect for creating a, a kind of landscape. The work was about landscape, and it was about a terrain that people hadn't maybe known about, the Josh Plateau in southern Nigeria. It was about how, how, what was the texture of this landscape? What was the terrain like? So I started to investigate the plateau. So I started to use instruments that you would find in that space. Mm -hmm. Instruments that you would naturally find in that terrain. Landscape is about the man and woman being in touch with nature as well, either commanding it or being subservient to it, but the importance of nature. So the, the, the ceremonies within is really much about a, a landscape, you know, um, um, sound art that uh, gives you a complete description of the space that, as it would be. I wanted to make something that was, you know, just like Toyin's drawing, something that you hadn't quite experienced maybe before. So what was her brief to you and what did you understand that brief to be? She just said to me that uh, she really liked my work. She'd, work, she'd listened to some of my, my music, um, music for architecture work, and she, she felt that I already, I already had a sound that she wanted. In terms of what I could do, it was, it was very much free reign. I would send her edits and she would just say, great, go crazy, really go for it, really go as far as you can possibly go with this. It was really empowering to be able to just keep on being really creative and then eventually sort of chop it and start to take away the sort of slightly more wilder aspects, mm -hmm. if you like, and then hone it. But we've actually mixed the sound in the space. I had to mix the sound in the space because of the 12 different speakers that each different um, sort of passage goes through. So you, I couldn't do that unless I could feel the reflections in the space. Well, that's the thing. I mean, the sound isn't, it's not a complement. It's an integral part of the experience of walking through the space, of, of looking at the work. So how do you... How do you think, how do you plan across this 90 metre curve space? How do you create a sound installation that can work there and take people on a physical and auditory journey that way? The curve is, is very challenging, very high ceilings. Like you said, 90 metres and a curved wall, which technically is a whispering wall. If you, if you speak in one end, as we're speaking now in this space, it literally is travelling all the way to the other end. So sound bleeds. So... I, I, went with the, I went with the space in a way, I went with the bleeding of the space and therefore the composition from sort of looking at architecturally, which I'm really into, I, I'm always looking at the space, I'm always looking at the acoustics, I'm always looking at the acoustic response. The Ceremonies Within has got three different movements to it. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about the, what, the, what those three movements are. But the first, the first movement is to describe the scenery, to describe the nature. It has a lot of water, has a lot of stones, um, has a lot of thumb piano, and this kind of choral effects going on. And it's really kind of unraveling. It's kind of like um, a sort of landscape opening up to you and, and getting a view into it, and then enticing you to walk into it. So the first movement is very much a kind of raw palette of new sounds that are sort of terrain, not typically African, but with a kind of percussive tempo, very slowly introduced, but very subtly. And then in the middle, the percussion happens, where there's a very, very pulsating beat, but not something that you'd hear in a club or something you'd hear in a normal piece of music. It's very African, but at the same time, it's not typically African. It's not just a djembe. It's a, quite a layered set of drums and a very specific sort of um, pattern that I've used. And so the rhythm happens in the middle of the, of, in the second movement, and then there's a very strong strings passage that runs through that, and that idea is to create absolute movement. And then the, the last movement is very much about um, this dramatic sort of uncomfortable feeling. So the music gets a, a brass composition over there, and again layered with percussion, a lot of talking drum, you know, kind of West African talking drum with a, with a stretched um, skin. Rhythm is a very important aspect of Africa, but I think of, of generally, you know, 
pulse and humanity, you know, it's like our heartbeat, the most essential rhythm there is. This collaboration with Toya, how does this sit within your larger uh, project of music for architecture? Absolutely, it fits in really, really well because obviously it's about this incredible space. It's about um, using sounds to um, collaborate with different um, art forms. In this case, the artist, but also the architecture, the brutalist architecture of, of the Barbican, which is a very unique architecture in itself. If I'm honest with you, this piece really feels like a co combination of a lot of the work I've been working on because I basically put everything I've sort of been thinking about into this one. And, and, and going forward, it feels really strong. It feels like there's a, a very clear statement of what I'm about, my sound. So what is that sound? Um, it's a deep, a deep, beautiful love, ancestral percussion, and, and for of original rhythms of Africa, with a sort of um, a sensibility of modern sort of cinematic movements. You've talked before about trying to make music with the concept of experiencing space through all the senses. Yeah. Well, visual art has to exist in a space. And I think sometimes to complement that with sound, not always, it has to be right. It really has to be right. So I think that it's not for doing sound for the sake of it, but I think when it's right, when it does work, it can make all your senses really start to interact with each other and it makes them bounce off each other. So the visual is, as you're walking through the space, you're seeing a visual story that then is reinforced by the sound that makes you look at it again. Because it's, uh, maybe a sound appears in the background which makes you look in the, f in the foreground or the background of that painting more. Because it kind of, there's a synergy, there's you know, a synesthesia you know, that we have naturally. The synesthesia is really about the fact that you can see um, sound. And to have that then allow your, your, your um, imagination to freely flow, I think it's really mind-blowing. I think it, when it's right, it really blows your mind because music allows your mind to float and to, you know, float away into your own thoughts. Mm -hmm.